everybody. Welcome to Mindfulness Meditation. Today we're going to be going over a few mindfulness practices, um, how mindfulness can help you, and how to continue practicing this at home. Before I begin, I do want to acknowledge that mindfulness meditation is based in Hindu and Buddhist practices. We really want to honor this when we practice mindfulness and think about how this is a centuries-old practice that we are borrowing from and adapting to our needs. We need to acknowledge how um, indigenous communities, black communities, and communities of color have practiced various forms of healing that are just as successful as evidence-based practice. Thus, I just want to keep that in mind as we're moving forward and just acknowledge that healing comes in all different forms. So what is meditation? Meditation is the intentional practice of uncritically focusing your attention on one thing at a time. What you choose to focus on will vary from one thing to another. Often the meditator repeats, either loudly or silently, a syllable, a word, a group of words. You might be focusing on an object, um, or you might be focusing on your breath. Whatever it is, one of these things will help you anchor your focus. If you think of your brain as a muscle, your ability to let your mind wander is a very strong muscle. However, your ability to bring your mind back to a specific point of focus or task is often a much weaker muscle. Meditation is one way to work out this muscle. So the goal is not to simply focus on this one thing at the um, exclusion of all other thought, but rather the attempt to achieve this kind of focus. The nature of the mind is such that it does not wanna stay concentrated. A lot of thoughts appear in our brain, right? So sometimes we may just be thinking and worrying about what someone else is doing. That thought's gonna to come to us but how do we refocus ourselves to get back on track? That's what we wanna get to through mindfulness. And when you recognize your mind wandering off, which it inevitably will, simply notice it and bring it back to the original object of your attention without judging yourself. Often we are quick to judge ourselves and tell ourselves, why am I thinking this way? These thoughts are normal and we wanna accept them and tell ourselves it's okay and at the same time, bring this to our awareness and refocus our attention. And this has amazing benefits. So research shows that meditation can slow heart rate, heart rate and breathing rates. Um, it can increase, it can decrease ox oxygen consumption. Um, it's associated with heightened creativity, empathy, self-esteem, decreased anxiety, depression, hostility, increased blood flow to the brain, and has successfully been shown to treat and prevent high blood pressure, heart disease, migraine headaches, autoimmune disease. Um, so that's just some of the benefits, right? And I welcome you to look this up and sort of see what research articles have shown about this, but those are just some of the benefits that are available. Also, in a recent study, MRI brain scans taken before and after participants' meditation regimen found increased gray matter in the hippocampus, which is an area that's important for learning and memory. The images also showed a reduction of gray matter in the amygdala, a region that is connected to anxiety and stress. The control group that did not practice meditation showed no such changes. So the bottom line here, if your amygdala and hippocampus are better connected, that could mean that your fear responses are much quicker, which means that you're gonna feel on edge, anxious and activated more often. This is reversible, right? So that's why we practice mindfulness and meditation. We wanna be doing things that change the size of these structures and makes them less connected. And meditation is a skill that has been shown to do just that. So, it is time to practice this. I'm gonna guide you through a muscle relaxation, which also requires some mindfulness. And the benefits of this increase of practice, our levels of relaxation deepen, attention becomes steadier. So it's not something that you can do once a day, you do have to be practicing it. So here's what we're gonna do right now. I want you to close your eyes and settle back as comfortably as you can. Listen to what I'm going to be telling you. I'm going to make you aware of certain sensations in your body and then show you how you can reduce these sensations. 
First, direct your attention to your left arm, your left hand in particular. Clench your left fist. Clench it tightly and study the tension in the hand and in the forearm. Study the sensations of tension. And now let go. Relax the left hand and let it rest on the arm of the chair. And note the difference between the tension and the relaxation. Once again now, clench your left hand into a fist tightly, noticing the tensions in the hand and in the forearm. Study those tensions and now let go. Let your fingers spread out, relaxed, and note the difference once again between muscular tension and muscular relaxation. Now let's do the same with the right hand. Clench the right fist. Study those tensions. And now relax. Relax the right fist. Note the difference once again between the tension and the relaxation. And enjoy the contrast. Once again now, clench the right fist. Clench it. Study the tensions. Study them. And now relax the right fist. Let the fingers spread out comfortably. See if you can keep letting go a little bit more. Even though it seems as if you've let go as much as you possibly can, there always seems to be that extra bit of relaxation. Note the difference once again between the tension and the relaxation. Note the looseness beginning to develop in the left and right arms and hands. Both of your left and right arms and hands are now a little bit more relaxed. Now bend both hands back at the wrists so that you tense the muscles in the back of the hand and in the forearm. Fingers pointing towards the ceiling. Study the tension. And now relax. Let your hands return to their resting positions and note the difference between the tension and the relaxation. Do that once again. Fingers pointing to the ceiling, feeling that tension in the backs of the hands and in the forearms. And now relax. Let go further and further. Now clench both your hands into fists and bring them towards your shoulders so as to tighten your biceps muscles, the large muscles in the upper part of the arm. Feel the tension in the biceps muscles. And now relax. Let your arms drop down to your sides and notice the difference between the tension that was in your biceps and the relative relaxation you feel now. Let's do that once again now. Clench both the biceps muscles, bringing both arms up, trying to touch with your fists, the respective shoulders. Study that tension. Hold it. Study it. And now relax. Once again, let the arms drop and study the feelings of relaxation the contrast between the tension and the relaxation. Just keep letting go of those muscles further and further. You can also learn to relax more completely the various muscles of the face. So what I want you to do now is to wrinkle up your forehead and brow. Wrinkle it until you feel all your forehead very much wrinkled the muscles tense and skin furrowed. And now relax.
smooth out the forehead. Let those muscles become loose. Do that once again. Wrinkle up your forehead. Study those tensions in the muscles above the eyes, in the forehead. And now smooth out your forehead. Relax those muscles. And once again, note the contrast between the tension and the relaxation. Now clench your jaws, bite your teeth together. Study the tension throughout the jaws. Relax your jaws now. Let your lips part slightly and note the difference between tension and relaxation in your jaw area. Once again, jaws clenched. Study the tension. And now let go further and further. Just continue to relax. And now we'll turn our attention to the neck. Press your head back against the surface on which it is resting. Press it back so you can feel the tension, primarily in the back of the neck and in the upper back. Hold it, study it. And now let go. Let your head rest comfortably now and enjoy the contrast between the tension you created before and the greater relaxation you can feel now. Just keep letting go further and further, more and more to the best of your ability. Do that once again, head pressed back, study the tension, hold it. And now let go, just relax, let go further and further. Now we can direct our attention to the muscles of the upper back. Arch your back, sticking out your chest and stomach so that you feel tension in your back, primarily in your upper back. Study that tension and now relax. Let the body once again rest again the back of the chair or the bed and notice the difference between the tension and the relaxation, letting those muscles get more and more loose. Once again now, arch the back way up. Study the tensions. Hold it. And now relax the back once again, letting all the tensions in these muscles go. And now take a deep breath, filling your lungs and hold it. Hold it and study the tension all through your chest and down into your stomach area. Study that tension. And now relax. Let go. Exhale and continue breathing as you were. Note once again the difference between the tension and the relaxation. Let's do that once again. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Study those tensions. Study them. Note the muscles tending. Note the sensations. And now exhale and continue breathing as you were, very comfortably breathing, letting the muscles in your chest and of your stomach relax, getting more and more relaxed each time you exhale. I'd like you now to stretch both legs, stretch them so that you can feel tension in the thighs, stretch them way out, 
and now relax. Let them relax and note the difference once again between the tension in the thighs and the relative relaxation that you feel now. Do that once again, locking your knees, stretch out both legs so that you can feel the muscles of your thighs getting very hard, very tense. And now relax, relax those muscles. Let them get loose. Get rid of all tension in the muscles of your thighs. Just as you have been directing your muscles to tense, you've also been directing them to relax or loosen. You've noticed the difference between the tension and muscular relaxation. You can notice whether there is any tension in your muscles, and if there is, you can try to concentrate on that part, send messages to that muscle to loosen, to relax. If you think of loosening that muscle, you will in fact be able to do so, even if only a little. Now I'd like you to think of that zero to 100 scale, where zero is complete relaxation and 100 maximum tension. Consider where you were, you would place yourself. Okay, I'm going to count from five to one. When I reach the count of one, open your eyes, stretch, and be wide awake. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Welcome back. I want you to take a moment and think about how that felt for you. Was it easy to relax those muscles? Was it difficult? What was getting in the way if it was difficult? If it was helpful, what specifically made it helpful? Now that you've taken a moment, I'm gonna continue moving forward and we're gonna try a couple more moving forward. So remember, it's not necessarily um, easy to feel relaxed while meditating. It's, you also don't need to feel relaxed. Sometimes you are tense, but you might see that surprising emotions are coming up, right? So you might be thinking about thousands of thoughts and when you're opening your eyes at the end of the meditation, um, you might realize that you're feeling a lot more relaxed than you actually thought you were in the moment. Um, sometimes hidden pain can come up. Um, if you find that you suddenly feel angry, depressed, or frightened, try to allow yourself to feel that, right? Don't push it away like we talked about. Try to let yourself feel that. Give yourself some compassion and stick with it. You might always hear that, you know, you have to be in a quiet place or you have to be feeling unstressed. You don't have to wait for ideal uh, conditions to meditate. Maybe, um, you know, you're in a sort of louder place. It's okay. The point is to bring your focus to the object of attention. So it's okay. Just try to incorporate any sort of annoying sensation within your meditation. And like I said, practice is important. So you might not always feel like trying this. Just give it a chance anyway. Try it because the more you practice it, um, even if it doesn't feel like the right time or the right moment, that's how you get your brain to start um, kind of disconnecting the amygdala and hippocampus. Um, maybe you need a group to help you do this and that's okay. Try to hold yourself accountable that way. Uh, maybe schedule it in. Whatever works for you, just try to keep doing this. Try to keep practicing it. So now we're going to try another visualization, another meditation. I want you to once again close your eyes and focus. This is called the leaves on a stream. I want you to sit in a comfortable position or lay if that's more comfortable. 
and just close your eyes. If you can't close your eyes, maybe rest them gently on a fixed spot in the room. Visualize yourself sitting beside a gently flowing stream with leaves floating along the surface of the water. For the next few minutes, take each thought that enters your mind and place it on one of these leaves. Let it float by. Do it with each thought, pleasurable, painful, neutral, whatever it is. Even if you have a joyous or enthusiastic thought, place it on a leaf and let it float by. If your thoughts momentarily stop, continue to watch the stream. Sooner or later, your thoughts will start up again. Allow the stream to flow at its own pace. Don't try to speed it up and rush your thoughts along. You're not trying to rush the leaves along or get rid of your thoughts. You are allowing them to come and go at their own pace. If your mind says, this is silly, I'm bored, or I'm not doing this right, place those thoughts on leaves too and let them pass. If the leaf gets stuck, allow it to hang around until it's ready to float by. If the thought comes up again, watch it float by another time. If a difficult or painful feeling arises, simply acknowledge it. Say to yourself, I notice myself having a feeling of boredom, a feeling of impatience, a feeling of frustration. Place those thoughts on leaves and allow them to float along. From time to time, your thoughts may hook you and distract you from being fully present in this exercise. This is normal. As soon as you realize that you have become sidetracked, gently bring your attention back to the visualization exercise. And now I'm gonna count down from five and I want you to open your eyes for refocus. Five, four, three, two, one. I want you to take a moment and reflect on how that felt for you. What was it like for you to engage in this exercise? And remember, be compassionate about the things that you're feeling, right? So as we talked about earlier, the whole point is to accept the thoughts that are coming to you and to not push them away. And this visualization lets you do just that. So just, you know, remember when you're having these thoughts, that's natural. Try to reframe any difficulties that you have encountered um, during this exercise as opportunity for growth. So visualization is a way to, um, you know, relax yourself, to consciously relax, your, relax yourself and relieve stress. It can be meditative in nature and it's been shown to be effective in treating generalized anxiety, um, any situation specific anxiety and physical illnesses. Everybody visualizes, right? So when you're daydreaming, that's a visualization. Um, whether you're thinking about memories or you're having some sort of inner talk, thinking of scenarios, that's all kinds of visualization. And you can use these visualizations to improve your life, improve your well being. So whether it's this exercise or another one that could be helpful. We're gonna continue working on this sort of visualization. 
So we're going to practice once again, okay? What I'm going to do is have you think of a safe place. So I want you to close your eyes once again and imagine what this might look like. To go to your safe place, lie down or sit down and be totally comfortable. Close your eyes. Walk slowly to a quiet place in your mind. Your place can be inside or outside. It needs to be peaceful and safe. Picture yourself unloading your anxieties, your worries. Notice the view in the distance. What do you smell? What do you hear? Notice what is before you. Reach out and touch it. How does it feel? Smell it. Hear it. Make the temperature comfortable. Be safe here. Look around for a special spot, a private spot. Find the path to this place. Feel the ground with your feet. Look above you. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? Walk down this path until you can enter your own quiet, comfortable, safe place. Now you're at your special place. What's under your feet? How does it feel? Take a few steps. What do you see above you? What can you hear? Reach out and touch something. What is its texture? What's nearby? Pick up the things. Feel them. These are your special tools or tools for your inner guide to reveal ideas or feelings to you. Look as far as you can see. What do you see? What do you hear? What aromas do you notice? Sit or lie in your special place. Notice its smells, sounds, sights. This is your place and nothing can harm you here. If danger is here, expel it. Some three to five minutes realizing you are relaxed, safe, and comfortable. Memorize this place's smells, tastes, sights, and sounds. You can come back and relax here whenever you want. Leave by the same path or entrance. Now notice the ground. Touch things near you. Look far away and appreciate the view. Remind yourself that this special place is one you've created and it's for you. Now I'm going to ask you to open your eyes at five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back. I want you to take a moment and reflect on how that felt for you. Did it feel better than the last exercise? Was the other sec exercise more helpful? No matter what it was, these are just some examples of ways that you can practice this meditation. And remember, with this one, you can always go back to your safe place. You can always put your thoughts on leaves and you can always direct your muscles to relax. So now that we've done a little bit of practice, here are some other options for 
apps that you can use to practice this uh, meditation, right? So there's um, guided imagery apps, there's something called Guided Mind, there's Calm, Headspace, those are widely advertised. Um, and you can even just put something on your phone, a timer, and just go and try one of these exercises. You can return to this video, whatever is most helpful for you. And there are so many other options on YouTube. There's, um, you can record yourself doing this if this, that is more helpful. These are just many of the options, right? There's also something called the Stress and Relaxation Reduction Workbook, um, which you can find at Amazon if you wanna go down the path of a, um, a physical copy, that's an option. There's also many scripts available online. And as I mentioned, you can always return back to this video. So what can you do now? Practice these meditation and visualization exercises to increase your comfort with them. Figure out which one fits best for you. What works for one person is not gonna work for another person and that's okay. Try to see what does work. Set aside 10 minutes every day to practice. And you can do this anywhere. You can do it literally in any environment. Um, and you don't have to wait for ideal conditions. Um, and you can hold yourself accountable by writing it down in your planner, writing it down in a journal, um, putting a reminder on your phone. And we do this because it helps to decrease our stress and improve our ability to respond effectively to stressful experiences. So we hope you found this presentation and this practice helpful. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to reach out to the Student Counseling Center at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Thank you all for coming.